In this video, I'm going to show you how you can sell put options for maximum profit in the shortest amount of time possible. I'm going to show you when is the right time to sell put options, when's the right time to exit those positions, and how you can do it as quickly as possible. First, let me share with you the five steps I go through to achieve this maximum profit in a short amount of time, and then I'm going to go through these five steps using a real life trade example. Step one is to sell put options in stocks that have a higher implied volatility, have experienced a recent decline, or, and are bouncing off support. Here you see my real life example I'm going to share with you in this video. On May 13th, you see that I sold the ESS July 19th $250 cash care put option. For that option, we were paid $4.30 per share. Now I'm gonna go ahead and take this up front many option traders would not suggest doing this trade. And the reason that ESS has low open interest on its options. But personally, I've done really well with trading low open interest options. They just have to be traded properly. So as I'm not suggesting ESS is a stock that you should trade options against, I am sharing this with you primarily to show you how to receive maximum profit when selling put options in a short amount of time, but also to show you potentially how to trade lower open interest options in stocks. So here you see our trade. We sold the ESS 250 cash care put option and got paid nice premium $4.30 per share. Since we did this trade on May 13th and the option expired on July 19th, it was about 60 days until expiration. Now let's take a look at the chart of ESS and talk through this step number one. That is selling put options against stocks that have a higher implied volatility, have experienced a recent decline, and or are bouncing off support. Now ideally, we like to have all three of those things in the stock that we're trading, but in reality, you just rarely get all three of them. Personally, I like to trade in stable, mature, consistently profitable companies. Those companies tend to have a lot less volatility than some of the more high-flying, more volatile stocks. Up here in the top right corner where you see the yellow arrow, that's the day we did this trade. One thing I'll tell you up front is that the implied volatility was not exceptionally high with ESS. Although I love to sell options in a stock that has a high implied volatility, the reality is, if you're trading in a more safer, more well thought out manner, typically implied volatility will not be exceptionally high. And that was the case with our trade here. And the reason I do that will be understood in just a moment. So notice, look at this chart here, that overall ESS had been finding resistance right around this yellow line here, which is at $252.85 per share. But about a week before I did this trade, it had broke through that area of resistance. And just for reference, we're looking here at the daily chart of ESS. So implied volatility wasn't exceptionally high. So why did I do this trade? Well, the next reason in step one is if the stock has experienced a recent decline. Now, looking back to the history of ESS, we see there were several times where it had experienced a pretty good decline. But in fact, on the day that we did this trade, it hadn't really experienced a big decline. I did this trade because of the third option in step one. And that is I picked this trade because ESS had recently bounced off support. You see, in my opinion, that's the safest time to sell a cash care put option right after a stock has recently bounced off support. And here's what that looked like. So I mentioned to you that ESS had been finding resistance at this area here right around $252.85 per share. About a week before we did this trade, it finally pushed through that resistance. Because that resistance once broken through tends to turn to support, I felt comfortable selling a cash care put option against ESS. So that was my why for step one. It had broke through this area of resistance, which then, as you see here when I zoom in, turned to support a couple of days after it broke through that area. It found support on May 8th, then on May 9th it was confirmed. Then the stock began to make higher lows and higher highs with each progressive candle each day. That satisfied me as far as step one. Now let's move on to step two. In order to sell put options, for maximum profit in the shortest amount of time, we'd like for the stock to be overextended to the downside, undervalued, or fairly valued if at all possible. Going back to ESS, you see that at the time that we did this trade, it was not overly sold off. Now, if I zoom out here, you see there were instances when it was selling off, but when we did this trade, it didn't experience a recent decline. And that's because I chose to do a safer trade than what I could have done back here, for example, after experiencing a large decline of around 16%. Now I will sell put options against stock that have experienced a sharp decline, but I like that decline to have pretty much ended and it looked like the stock is stabilizing or leveling off. But in this instance, my step two wasn't because it had experienced a sharp decline. Now, another reason that I will trade options against a stock like ESS is if I believe it's undervalued and finding some support. Now, in my opinion, ESS is not currently undervalued, but it is the third criteria of step two that is fairly valued. I will trade options in a stock that I believe is fairly valued, and ESS does fit that description. I believe fundamentally, from a long-term valuation perspective, ESS is fairly valued. It's not overvalued, and it's not undervalued, but I believe it is fairly valued. So I'm comfortable selling put options 
against a stock like ESS if it's finding some nice support, which we see it is. And now we move on to step three, and that's picking the proper expiration day. Ideally, I like my expiration days of options I sell to be somewhere between 45 days expiration and 60 days to expiration. That's not a hard rule, but generally I like to sell options that expire in about that month and a half to two month time frame. And in fact, the trade we did here with ESS, it was just over 60 days at 67 days to expiration. There's two reasons why I like 45 to 60 days to expiration when I sell put options. The first is I like the trade to have enough time to work in my favor. The second is I like there to be enough time decay or time value premium, otherwise known as theta, so that I have theta working in my favor. When you sell options that are somewhat close to at the money or even out of the money, theta or time decay should work in your favor. The fourth step is to pick the strike price of the put option you sell. In my trade here, you see that ESS was trading for right around $260 per share. Remember, we sold the $250 strike price. So I sold that put option about $10 out of the money or below where ESS was trading at when we did this trade. I did that because number one, it was below the area of support it had recently found, which is right around $252.85 per share. It also allowed ESS to decline and my put option not be challenged. You see, it could decline by $10 I still be totally safe on this position. When you're selling put options, you just have to weigh the risk. If you sell a closer to at the money put option, then obviously the risk of the option going in the money or being in the money expiration is higher than if you sold a farther out of the money option. But then also keep in mind that you will get less premium for selling that farther out of the money option. So you just have to think through and weigh the risk and reward potential. It's important to balance aggression with safety when you're selling cash secure put options. And step five is to manage the trade properly. There's multiple things to think about when you manage your trades and I'll go through them with you in just a moment when I talk through in detail on this specific trade. Now let's talk through all the details of this cash care put option I sold in ESS to help you see how you can use these five steps to sell put options for max profit in the shortest amount of time. So remember we sold this ESS July 19th $250 cash care put option for $4.30 per share. And we did this trade on May 13th or 67 days until expiration of this option. And why did I do this trade? Well, fundamentally, I believe that ESS was fairly valued. It's a stock I've been trading in for quite a while, have done a lot of trades in, and I'm comfortable selling cash could put options in it around this 260 level. Although they've been finding resistance around this $253 level multiple times over the previous year, it had recently broke through that $253 area. It had come back down, found support, and was beginning to advance in price. That helped me feel comfortable selling a cash could put option just below that area would have just confirmed support at $252.85 per share. As far as our expiration, we picked the expiration date that was around that 60 days to expiration. When I sell these cash care put options, the first thing I look at is what strike price would I feel comfortable selling that cash care put option at. You see, although premium is important to me, the number one factor is safety. So picking the correct strike price is the most important factor to me initially. After that, I look at how much premium I'll receive for selling that cash can put option. Then I make the decision, is that reward worth the risk? Here's the option chain for options that expire in 33 days currently in ESS. It's currently trading for just under $280 per share at $278.50 per share. And notice this 270 cash can put option. It's saying you can get between $3.30 per share and $4.40 per share. Again, keep in mind, this has very low open interest. So if you don't like to trade in low open interest stocks, well, ESS is one that you definitely don't want to trade in, but it still serves as a nice example of how to trade in low open interest stocks, but more importantly, how to sell put options for max profit with minimal time. As you see here, our estimated daily time decay or theta is 7.8 cents per share per day. So if we sold one cash care put option, that'd be the equivalent of 100 shares. So we expect this cash care put option that expires in 33 days at the 270 strike price to lose in value about $8 per contract. And that's if everything else stayed the same. The price stayed the same, volatility stayed the same, interest rates stayed the same, all other Greeks stayed the same. This should lose about $8 per contract per day. So to recap, in picking my strike price, I number one, look at what strike price I'd be comfortable selling that cash could put option at. Since ESS had recently found support right around $253 per share, I felt comfortable selling that cash could put options below that at $250 per share. If you want a more room to be wrong, you can look to sell the 240 cash care put option. Your potential return wouldn't be as high, but it would be safer. Now let's talk through how you manage a trade for maximum profit in the shortest amount of time. Now I'd love to say that every trade will work out perfectly for you, but that's just not reality. You see, when we sell cash care put options, we're selling someone else insurance. They're buying that insurance because sometimes 
they're going to need that insurance, which means sometimes positions will go against you. If you use the five steps I'm sharing with you here, then it will greatly improve your odds of winning your trades, but there'll be some trades that just go against you and will end up being losers. So how do you manage cash care put options for maximum profit and when appropriate for minimum loss? First, let's talk through how to minimize losses when you sell cash care put options. There are several ways you can do this. The first way we'll look at here with our chart, and that is to close up the position no matter what the P&L is, if it breaches a certain area. So for example, with this ESS trade, what would be an appropriate level to exit this position at for potentially a loss? Well, I entered this trade because it had recently found support around this $253 area. So my trigger might be to exit this position if ESS broke through that area of support, no matter what the profit and loss was on the cash care put option that I sold. For example, here, with the support being around $252.85 per share, I might set a limit that if ESS trades below $250 per share, then I exit the position for a profit or loss, whatever it may be. So you set that dollar figure up front that if that level is breached, you get out of the position. Another exit loss trigger might be when a position goes against you and it's reached a certain level of loss. For example, here's a bullish put credit spread that we're in with the Russell 2000. The ticker symbol is RUT. And it's about 10 times what IWM trades for. I'm sharing this because this one has gone against us a little bit since we entered a couple days ago. So as you see here under average price, we received $2.92 per share for doing this bullish put credit spread. My exit loss trigger on this position is that if it reaches an unrealized loss, of three times what I received up front, or three times $2.92 per share, then I will get out of the position. If you do the math, that equate to $8.76 per share times the 100 shares we own, which would come to, if this position reached a loss, of $876 total for the position, then I'll exit it, no questions asked. Here you see currently under unrealized P&L, we're at a negative 187, so we still have a long way to go before it reaches this $876 loss. But looking at your position P&L is another way to easily make a decision if you need to exit a position. So those are a couple ideas on how to exit a position if they go against you. But what about when they go in your favor, like most of them should if you pick them properly? Here's a couple of ideas to think about when you're picking the proper time to exit a position if it goes in your favor. One idea is to exit this when it reaches a certain amount of profit, for example, say 80% of potential profit. Now you hear all sorts of number when it comes to when you should exit a winning position. Personally, I like to exit when it's around 80% of potential profit. There are some other things that go into that, but overall, that's my general rule. I wanna be out when I've realized 80 to 85% of the potential profit on a position. So what would that look like in my real life trade here? Well, we receive $4.30 per share for selling this cash care put option. If you stay in this position to the point where you've realized 80% of the profit, that will leave you only 20% potential profit left. So I would like to exit this position when this cash care put option was selling for around 86 cents per share. And in fact, as you see here, that's exactly what we did. About a month after we did this trade, or on June 13th, we bought to close that ESS July 19th 250 cash care put option, and we paid 85 cents per share. So about halfway through this potential trade, we realized 80% of our profit. So in my opinion, it was time to get out. We had greatly improved our return on this position by closing it out early. We'd taken the risk off the table. So this trade obviously went our way, performed very well for us. I want to mention a couple other ideas to consider if the trade had not gone against us because they're ones that I use a lot when I trade cash care put options. For example, let's say that this cash care put option had not gone our way. Let's say it went against us. Well, I mentioned you could exit it when it reached a certain dollar loss or broke through a certain level of support. But another idea is to switch it into what's called the wheel strategy. And that is to let the cash care put option be assigned to you. In other words, you buy 100 shares of ESS and then begin to sell covered calls against it. And I do like using that strategy. But another idea, and one I use a lot in this main ops trading account, is if a position has gone against me, but nothing has really fundamentally changed with the company, then I'll consider just rolling the cash care put option down as I roll it farther out in time. Now there are additional considerations you wanna think about, for example, is the company announcing earnings because I try to avoid selling cash care put options in companies during expiration cycle where they're announcing earnings. But if they're not announcing earnings and I still feel comfortable with the position, then I'll look to roll that cash care put option down as I roll it out in time. You just have to decide what you're going to do if a position goes against you and you want to do that before you enter the trade. But just keep in mind that when a trade goes in your favor, and a lot of them will, like this one did here for us with ESS, you don't typically want to hold these things to expiration. You see, it just doesn't make sense to hold this for another month for only 85 cents per share. We could put that capital to work in a new position with a lot higher return. One technique I use to help me know when is the right time to exit position is that I set alerts 
on all the options that I sell. Here you see a list of all the option alerts I have set right now in my main ops trading account. There's a bunch of them. These alerts are set for various reasons, but for the purpose of this video, anytime I sell a cash cap put option, I set an alert that reminds me to review the position once the extrinsic value reaches 20% of what it was when I originally sold it. Another way I make sure I get out of positions that are profitable is by setting limit orders. If I know I definitely want to exit a position once it reaches that 80% of profit, I go ahead and set a limit order to buy the cash cap put option back once it reaches that 80% profit. For example, up top here, you see a buy limit order to buy back a cash cap put option I sold that was a longer dated cash cap put option in ADBE. I have a limit order to buy this back if it reaches 55 cents per share. So avoid the temptation of staying in cash cap put options until the very end. If you've realized a lot of your profit, the return might not be worth the risk. The reason why you close those cash cap put options out early that have realized most of their profit is you can put that capital right back to work like we did the same day in our Russell 2000 bullish put credit spread trade. So instead of staying in that ESS position for another month, we're able to put the capital back to work in a higher return position using the Russell 2000. So overall, how this trade turned out for us. Well, here you see my Excel spreadsheet, all the trades I've done at ESS over the past several years. One thing I want to point out to you here under the sell eight column is I don't continually trade options in ESS. I pick opportunistic times to do that. Now, all trades won't always go your way, but because I picked opportunistic times to trade put options against ESS, as you see over here in this column under net, every single one of these trades have been profitable for us over the past several years. And again, this doesn't happen all the time. We definitely have trades go against us, but we have a lot more that go in our favor as you see here. Here in this yellow shaded area, you see the trade that I just shared with you in this video. Overall, we ended up with a nice profit of just over $343. Although we had sold the third Friday of July cash care put option, we closed it out a month early. Because of that, we greatly improved our return. If you run the return on capital annualized this position, or basically what we had at risk if ESS had gone to zero, we realized a 16% return on capital. If you were to run the return on margin, or how much our broker requires to have set aside for this position, as you see here in the bottom right corner, our return on margin annualized was 154%. Using this five-step process when you sell cash care put options is a way of maximizing your returns and decreasing the amount of time you're in trades. If you'd like to get an alert whenever we buy stock or sell options, check out the benefits of becoming a patron down at the link in the description below. Knowing when is the best time to sell cash care put options is vitally important if you're to be a successful long-term option trader. To see some of my favorite technical indicators I use every day when I sell options, check out the video at the link above in the description below entitled, What are the best technical indicators for option trading. Until next time, happy investing, and we'll see you again soon.